All right, we're here in the J Concepts garage. We're uh, live here today. Uh, just wanted to go over some race results from over the weekend. We had the, of course, the Reedy Race, the Champions, uh, over the weekend, and then we got some upcoming events that we wanted to discuss. We got uh, two cars here uh, out in front of us today. Uh, we got the uh, Cavalry replica with his body here with uh, my car that we had at the Reedy Race, and we got the Bigfoot, uh, the Traxxas Bigfoot. Uh, replica here so it's uh, kind of a little bit of a mashup here in the in the garage but uh, essentially the uh, Reedy race was a uh, you know pretty much the same as it's been the last couple of years it's uh, really been a battle between uh, uh, Ryan Cavallari Ryan Mayfield and uh, those guys I think uh, seem to be about the kings of that event uh, in the past several years I think I think Ryan now has got uh, second place uh, three times. He's won one time in the past four visits to OCRC. So uh, Mayfield having a ton of success uh, getting up there on that podium. Uh, we got Cavalieri with two wins uh, during that time frame. Uh, Dakota Fenn, the other winner. So uh, the the reality is is that that race has kind of belonged to the Ryans here. Uh, the last several years in terms of the podium finishes. Uh, Cavallari kind of doing his thing there at the end of the, uh, the, the end of the event and getting a really good finish uh, in that last round to get him the overall championship. The, interestingly enough, uh, there was some, you know, there was a little bit of a vibe at first. I think people didn't, uh, didn't know uh, if Mayfield was going to be as competitive as he had been in the past with the recent, uh, you know, changeover to the Yokomo uh, YZ2, YZ4, but uh, I think he showed everybody that he was just as fast, if not faster, than he's been over the last several years. So uh, he was uh, tied for the lead at the end of four-wheel drive, uh, went into two-wheel drive. He was winning races from the back row and uh, just really continuing to pour it on as the race went on. And uh, Cavallari actually had to have a perfect score in uh, in order to win the, the, uh, win the event. He had to have a perfect score in two-wheel drive. So uh, Mayfield uh, really uh, kept him honest the entire time, uh, leading by one point until the last uh, the last race where Cavallari won and uh, Ryan had an issue. He jumped the triple jump, kind of landed on the pipe, and the Eclipse that hold uh, inside the uh, shock that hold the shock piston on uh, just they came off. They broke. Uh, he pulled the car over to me, and it was like they're missing. So. Uh, they must be inside the shock somewhere, but uh, kind of an unfortunate incident. I uh, don't know if he would have won that uh, race or not against uh, Pudge, but I think in general, uh, he, for, for sure he would have got second at least uh, in that race and would have really, uh, you know, maybe had a little better race uh, there in the end. So anyway, it came down to those two guys right at the end, and um, Cavalieri got the win. Uh, Mayfield got second. And uh, Ty Tessman actually got a third place in the podium, the overall results. And then it was uh, Spencer Rivkin got fourth. Uh, he got third last year, fourth this year. But, uh, you know, just a couple per points there at the end. I think him and Tessman and uh, Dustin Evans were tied on points uh, going into the last round. And, and they finished third, fourth, and fifth. So uh, a couple other notables there. We had uh, Alex... Uh, Alex K got seventh overall, and I think he was pretty excited with that. He got a lot of wins uh, in the four-wheel drive class, and two-wheel drive he was holding his own, and uh, probably uh, he probably did a little better than he thought he was going to do. So I think uh, everybody was excited for Alex, and uh, Dakota was right in there. Uh, Jared Tebow <clears throat> and Chad Dew, I think, got his first ever top ten. So... Uh, good results overall for the J Concepts crew. Going on the open class, we had uh, Brent Telke taking the win in the two wheel open. Uh, I think I believe he qualified fifth. He won the first main and got second in the second main. So it was uh, just you know just great driving by him. Uh, there were some guys that were faster, uh, but it seems like Brent was a little more poised with his driving and did uh, did an excellent job there in the first and the second main, which is uh, both both of them count. Uh, Four-wheel drive itself was uh, Brock Chaplin, 
Champlin did a great job there uh, getting the victory um, overall and just kind of uh, putting a stamp on that four-wheel drive class. Tommy Hines was running really well in the first main leading. Unfortunately, had a little incident with uh, uh, lap traffic in the first main. Uh, kind of changed the results of that one. Uh, CJ Jelen was running really well and just kind of a host of other guys that were possibly in contention for the win. But uh, in the end, Brock just kind of did his thing and uh, ended up winning that one. Uh, so those guys will get their tickets to the Invitational class next year. So uh, so Brent will officially have himself in the invite. We'll have Brock in the invite. So it should be uh, interesting to see how those guys fare. Uh, coming up, uh, we have the Super Cup Championship Series coming up, the Round 2 at Lake Park. Uh, that's coming uh, next weekend, first weekend in February. So we'll be out there at Lake Park. They're going to have a fresh track. Ryan Eckert and the uh, crew out there is uh, preparing a new track. Uh, be new. Uh, got some new dirt, he said. He's going to have a little bit of new layout. And looking forward to getting back outdoors. Hopefully the weather is nice and turn in a good, another good crowd out there at Lake Park. That was, uh, we haven't been there for several years now with a little bit of a shutdown they had. So we're expecting a good uh, good turnout out there. Uh, we got this guy here because a uh, little fun class we were offering at Lake Park was to race the uh, the Bigfoot class. So we were offering this as something we could race. Uh, basically, you can change, put your radio, you put your own radio in it, put a LiPo battery, and uh, rock and roll with a stock uh, stampede, or as uh, we're calling it, the Bigfoot class. So uh, this, is the, this is the truck that I have ready to go looks a lot nicer now than it probably will after the race uh, but uh, should be fun to get this out of Lake Park there was one time we had a short course race out there we ran all of them together in the main I believe we had 20 something trucks in the A main and that was as the sun was going down out there at Lake Park and maybe we'll get the same thing again with these I'd like to see a big crowd uh, of these out there and just for something to do something different uh, we've had some guys that just kind of talked about having something that was just kind of a tension breaker and I think this the Bigfoot class could could definitely do it for us so I uh, got the 79 Bigfoot here there's also the other trucks uh, that have the you know the Raptor style bodies on them which uh, can also be run at the same time but as long as it's one of the Bigfoot stampedes stock type setup you can put your radio and your lipo battery in it and rock and roll so maybe we'll get this thing fired up here before the race itself do a couple little test runs make sure it's working properly um, so looking forward to that at Lake Park and looking forward to just our normal racing out there of course we'll have Damon Borkowitz who uh, was running so well at the race on turf at Beachline of course Paul Wynn, Jared Mitch, Ryan Eckert, Leon McIntosh we'll probably have the you know the uh, guys from up north uh, of course we'll have Lance running the crowd uh, running the show. We're going to have some guys from down south like the Jaders and everybody down there. So uh, look forward to the Super Cup being a big race there at Lake Park. Moving on past that, the uh, Indoor National Series is going to crank off in St. Louis, Missouri. That's going to be at Smack Track. And Smack Track, we've been there for several years now. I don't even know how many times we've been there. This is probably the sixth or seventh trip uh, to Smack Track and uh, Rod Rippey, Chris Baumgartner, the guys that are uh, working there on the track. Uh, they're getting things ready and ready for a big show there. We've got confirmed. we got Ryan Mayfield coming in uh, straight off the Reedy race. He's going to be running the, the race there at Smack. Uh, he's going to run his two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive uh, Yokomo cars. So look out for Ryan there. He's been there one time before. He won both classes in two-wheel and four-wheel. And uh, I'm sure he's going to be looking for more wins this time with the Yokomos. Uh, we're going to have uh, Carson Wernemont is also going to be coming out uh, with Ryan with the, the Team Yokomo. We're going to have Brent Telke. Of course, I was out there supporting Team Associated, Reedy Power, uh, Jay Concepts, Alex K. He was there last year, won one of the classes. He'll be back again to uh, see what he can uh, see if he can give Ryan some uh, some grief out there. So. Uh, we'll be out. I'll be out there. Damon Borkowitz, of course. Uh, we just also heard that Frank Root from TLR is going to be out there with Max Fleur, and both of those guys. Uh, we're going to be running the new uh, TLR 
22T 3.0. So I just saw that today. Frank was uh, making an announcement. He's going to be out at the uh, Winter Indoor National. So we're going to have a good two-wheel, four-wheel, and a truck class, uh, which is uh, uh, you know kind of the main three. Uh, there's also a two-wheel drive over 40 class. There's, of course, the competitive stock classes. Uh, we're going to have some of our guys coming back uh, that did so well last year on the series. Uh, have Al Horn and the Factory Tracks crew. They were already messaging me about uh, coming out. So uh, really looking forward to a great crowd. Uh, I believe J.P. Richards normally comes out. Uh, so it's the, the, the whole A main usually at Smack Track. The Winter Indoor Nationals is stacked. And two-wheel, four-wheel, and the mod truck it will also be competitive this year. So uh, those are kind of our three upcoming races. Uh, we didn't talk a little bit. Uh, but a little bit of product here. We got the F2 body, which is going to release uh, very shortly. This is the new uh, body for the B6, B6D. We had this displayed out at the Reedy Race, did a couple photos, did some video with it, but we'll have our studio shots and official release coming uh, very shortly on this, uh, on this body. But uh, this is the one on the B6, of course. We're also going to have one for the Yokomo and for the X-Ray. Uh, vehicles, but uh, the Associated will be first, then we'll go into the, the Yokomo will be the second release, and you'll see those very shortly. So yeah, I mean, basically a lot of the same uh, components to this body as we had from the original finisher that we um, designed and came out with in 2011. Uh, has the step roof treatment, which is kind of a, the standard on this body, but uh, there's also some, some other uh, functional components about this body that I think people are really going to like. Uh, if you kind of take a second here, I'll take the body off. Got our little body mount shelf here on the back for the F2. So if we set the car to the side, you know, this body itself, uh, the cab is very similar to how it's been in the past. Uh, the only difference is the cars have been getting a lot narrower over the years. So the whole car is is getting smaller this way. I mean, if we took out one of our B4s here, you could see, you know, the fact of how na much narrower the cars have been getting over the years, but everything's coming down. Uh, so we got the step uh, steps on the roof, got the louvers cut in here, which is, you know, provides a little extra rigidity here, but also provides a little bit of uh, air relief here if you want to cut out some of these areas or cut out any of these louvers or scoops. We've got a little center uh, divider fin here in the center which again just kind of stiffens this up especially when you're running a lightweight body like this. Uh, you know it's nice to kind of have that that rigidity in the center. You've got the dual the dual windows on the sides which is kind of what really set that finisher body at first so apart uh, was that window that was straight under the one of the steps. Got the chamfer edging here on the sides, which was been so popular with a lot of our different bodies. Got a little scoop built in here in the back, which just kind of gives it a little bit of a, a little bit of a depth and change of direction. And then we got the we got a stepped relief here on the front side, which the stock associated body has. Uh, as a single feature, but we also have, we actually have two features here where it's kind of a dual step, uh, which kind of brings us back to the dual step on the roof. So it kind of ties this whole thing together. It's kind of a real, uh, it's a really neat body. Uh, the guys really are liking the way this looks at the Reedy Race, and uh, probably got more looks at this particular vehicle and car at the Reedy than we did with any other uh, that we've had over the last few years. and. Uh, this and the S2 body should really kind of take care of a lot of our needs on the uh, 10 scale buggy circuit. So we'll set that to the side and check and see if we got any comments or questions here uh, that uh, maybe we can check out. All right, the first comment was by Gotti Jr. Thumbs down. <laughs> Second, pretty typical. Yeah, pretty typical. Uh, question from Alex Watsky. Will we see an F2 body for the 22 3.0? You know, we've, we've talked about it, but I don't think that we're going to see one for the 3.0 just because uh, there's a little bit of limbo right now whether 
uh, what the car is going to come with the lay down transmission in the future or because uh, the car doesn't right now come equipped in the box with the lay down transmission so what we're kind of hoping is uh, you know we don't have any direct input but you know we we hope that they have a vehicle coming down the road that has the the lay down gearbox in the car or in the kit itself and then it'll be a little bit easier for us to incorporate a body that fits the latest car with everything in it uh, otherwise uh, it gets a little confusing on our end i mean we have an s2 for the car now which uh, has worked well when ryan was running the car we have one back here uh, and it's been a great body but i think if we're going to go f2 for the tlr it will be you know we'll wait on when whenever there's another generation vehicle a couple questions about space bars when will they be available <laughs> pretty normal uh everything that we're getting in uh we're getting in uh, tires and packaging them every week here uh, we're shipping everything out based on a distribution uh, orders that we're getting from distribution so anything that's coming in as a back order uh, when we're receiving them where they're going out in the order that that we received the orders from our uh, distributors or dealers uh, even our team drivers are on a back order uh, basis with that tire because it's been so popular uh, we're in a position with it where we can only make so many uh, at a time and we're actually ramping that uh, process up to to make more of them and uh, but we're probably still you know about a month away from being able to double or triple the amount uh, that we're able to provide so we're kind of hoping here uh, that we can get a little closer uh, to being caught up with the tire but Hopefully when we're able to double or triple our production amount with that tire, then uh, then we'll be able to really uh, fulfill everything that we've had. It's It's been, it's kind of exped, exceeded our expectation in terms of how many uh, would be requested. Uh, so we're trying to catch up to that. A uh, question from Jeff Lanes. Is there a carbon pit board, is the carbon pit board going to still be available? No, uh, at this point we've decided not to make any more of the carbon pit boards because we made about 50 of each uh, color. We had the blue and the black, we made about 50 of each. Uh, we sold them, uh, we sold out of the different boards and we're just a uh, little, they're so pricey that we're very concerned that it's such a limited draw to that item that uh, it's very expensive to put together. So right now we're probably not going to have any more of them. Uh, question from Norman Burrow. Is there anything coming out for the Durango two and four wheel buggies? Unfortunately, no. Uh, we've we've made some Durango uh, option uh, bodies and wings in the past, but uh, over the time period, the, the vehicles, I'd say 2012, 11, 12, 13 is probably when we had our options for that, uh, for the vehicle, but it really just hasn't been very popular in the market. Uh, the Durango is probably the one we get the least amount of requests for, and it's going down uh, over the years. It's, it's getting less. So, uh, you know, I'd say on the popularity scale, you have the Associated, you have the TLRs, you have the X-rays, the Yokomo, you have the Kyosho, and then you have the Durango as somewhere down there. So that's, uh, people always ask, oh, when are you going to have this for this car and this for this car? It's just based on... The popularity and if the cars are popular and they're out there and we're getting a lot of requests we'll probably make something for it like we have for you know we we have stuff for the associated the tlr the x-ray the yokomo and we've had stuff for the kyosho and even for the durango but over the years you have to see what makes the most sense question from alex k who was your uh biggest shock of the reader race in 2017 who surprised you the most uh, well, the, the top three, top four were pretty locked, top five. Alex K did pretty well. He, I wouldn't say I was shocked, but I think he did pretty well. I don't, wouldn't say that he overachieved, but he definitely achieved some serious, uh, great results. Uh, I would like to see him, uh, maybe next, next year, if he can kind of take what he did this year in four wheel, add a little bit of two extra, uh, two wheel drive, uh, 
I think he could get into the top five, which I think is, when you look at the top five guys in that class, they're pretty tough to beat. Question from Joe Estes. Um, will you guys be getting into drone racing? I don't think so. Um, probably because it just doesn't interest me all that much. I'm just kind of afraid to get into something that I don't know that much about. Obviously, it's there's a lot of growth there. It's kind of went, the popularity um, has went through the ceiling, and then it came back down, and it's been all over the place. But uh, for us, I think the cars uh, are just so much more about what we know. And as far as I know about the drone, um, we would have to definitely get really involved to make a difference and to sell anything there. And maybe it's not in our wheelhouse. Question from John Gody. Uh, what about the Octagons? Will they be in production soon? Yeah, they're they're in production. We're trying to, uh, you know, set a release a release date. Uh, so it'll be early this year. Uh, that's really all I kind of know at this at the moment. You know, we'll have the gold compound. We're gonna have green and and black compound. Uh, there's just a few out there that we've tested. They've performed really well, and I think uh, we're set to go on those and just um, kind of putting together our final production numbers and trying to get things organized so we can get them out uh, to market. A uh, question from Joey Carlson. Uh, F2 body for the B64? We'll have an S2 body for the B64 and eventually the F2 as well. Uh, the S2 will be the first one out because that seems to be, um, you know, that's the one that's uh, first out for the two wheels. So we'll have the S2 out first for the B64, which I think everyone's really going to like. We haven't done an S2 for a 10 scale buggy yet, and uh, but it's in the works, And but we can't really do much until the car is released. So we're kind of waiting on that. So when Associated gets that car out, maybe we'll have some stuff ready to go after that. Question from Morris Bradley Spears. Uh, which is your favorite Bigfoot? As far as the real trucks, I would say Bigfoot 8 is my favorite truck, then Bigfoot 4. And then probably into the other generations, the 11s and 10s. And, but I think I, I think my favorite two trucks is Bigfoot 8 and Bigfoot 4, probably. Question from Rob Sturgill. Uh, will Gotti Jr. get his own shirt with his own colors? No. Uh, Gotti definitely won't be getting his own shirt. If I don't have my own shirt, then Gotti's not getting his own shirt, so. Who is your pick to win the Royal Rumble this Sunday? Uh, the Ultimate Warrior. All right, I think that's all the questions we got. All right, well, that kind of wraps us up here. Just kind of did a recap of the uh, race results uh, from the past week at the Reedy Race, then going into what's coming up at the Super Cup and other events uh, like the Indoor National Series in St. Louis. So if, uh, if you haven't signed up yet, get, get ready for the Super Cup or the Indoor National Series in uh, Missouri. So we hope to see everybody there. Thanks for the support, and uh, we appreciate all the feedback that we're getting. Uh, definitely uh, click on that notification button so that if we do go live at any moment at a race event, which we did quite a bit at the Reedy, or we do something like this that you get notified that we're going on live. Uh, we're working on our setup. We've gotten uh, the experts out there telling us we either need better sound or better quality, and we're working on all that stuff. So we're experimenting here all the time. So thanks for the feedback, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.